enormous telescopes are currently being built at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea of the coast of France and Italy. These telescopes detect elementary particles called neutrinos. These two telescopes are part of the KM3Net research infrastructure. To find out more, I am at the Marseille Centre for Particle Physics to meet Pascal Coyle, who is the spokesperson of the KM3Net infrastructure. Thank you very much for your time. What is the KM3Net project? The KM3Net stands for the Kilometer Cube Neutrino Telescope, which is a, a very new type of telescope that we're building uh, at the moment. It's under construction. It's a very different type of telescope than normal in that unlike normal telescopes which look up to the sky and detect uh, light, this telescope looks down through the Earth and detects neutrinos. So from the Mediterranean Sea, our best view is actually off the sky in Australia through the Earth. We can do that because we're detecting neutrinos. Neutrinos are a fundamental particle of nature. In fact, they're the second most common particle in the universe uh, after the photons of light. Uh, neutrinos are the closest thing to nothing you can imagine. They have uh, very close to zero mass, zero charge, uh, zero size, and they interact very, very little uh, with matter. And, that's, and it's because of that property that we can uh, look through the Earth and catch neutrinos from the other side of the Earth. To catch the neutrinos, we build the telescope at the bottom of the sea. So our telescopes are situated on the sea floor with, at depths uh, deeper than two and a half kilometers. Uh, we have one telescope offshore from Toulon in, Fran in France and another telescope offshore Sicily. Their names, Orca in France and Arca in Italy, they're at uh, two and a half kilometers deep and three and a half kilometers deep. Uh, they consist of a, a forest of vertical strings which host um, what we call optical modules. The optical modules are glass spheres in, in which we have uh, many photo detectors uh, which catch light. They're super sensitive detectors, even more sensitive than the human eye. The human eye can catch maybe needs about seven photons to, to trigger, whereas these detectors, they can catch one single photon. So we have these giant strings, uh, in one case 200 meters high, in another case uh, 800 meters high. And what they do is they catch flashes of light in the sea. And it turns out when a neutrino interacts, if it interacts and makes a charged particle, the charged particle will make uh, a very short flash of intense blue light in the sea. So with our telescope, we catch this blue light. Uh, we measure the arrival time of the photons to nanosecond precision. Uh, we, we know where all the optical modules are, so we can then calculate the direction of where the neutrinos come from. Behind me, you can actually see uh, one of these uh, vertical strings. Uh, this is a string for the Orca detector uh, and here you can actually see uh, one of the optical uh, modules I mentioned which has 31 photo sensors inside it. So to actually deploy the string we wind it around this spherical frame. The whole frame gets lowered to the sea floor by a boat. Then we have a, a remotely operated submarine which uh, comes along and then connects the string to various junction boxes which are around the outside of the, the telescope. After the connection, uh, we then unfurl the string, uh, which means that this, this big frame uh, is very buoyant. It wants to go back to the surface of the sea. Remember, we're two and a half kilometers down. Uh, it starts to unfurl and the optical modules kind of pop out 
assets uh, going back to the surface and leaves behind uh, a 200 meter long uh, string. Eventually the telescope um, will be roughly about 100 strings uh, and with many strings we reach this uh, kilometer cube size detector which is in the name uh, came 3 net Why is it necessary to have such a huge infrastructure to detect neutrinos? Neutrinos are notoriously difficult to detect. Uh, their interaction with matter is so small, you need uh, a giant telescope to have a chance to catch a few of the neutrinos as they're passing through. So the way we catch the neutrinos is to use the, the sea as a target. Fortunately, there's a lot of water in the sea and um, by having such a large telescope, it increases the chance to detect uh, the neutrino. The other important reason is that the way we detect the neutrino is to use Cherenkov light. So it turns out that when a neutrino interacts, it can make a charged particle. If that charged particle is traveling faster than speed of light in the water, water light actually slows down in water, so um, the, the charged particle can actually travel faster than the, sp the speed of light in the water. When that happens, you get a special effect called the Cherenkov effect, which makes a, a cone of uh, blue light, which is emitted by the muon or electron as it's passing through the water. And because at these depths in the sea, everything is very dark, the, the sunlight from, from, the, from the top of the surface of the water doesn't make it below a thousand meters. Uh, we're sitting in the dark and we can catch these flashes of light as the neutrinos pass through. Why is it important to study neutrinos? One of the big questions in astroparticle physics is the origin of cosmic rays. Uh, the Earth is continually bombarded by charged particles coming from somewhere in the universe. Uh, at, at the moment, we don't really know where all these charged particles are coming from, and we don't really know uh, how they get accelerated and where they get accelerated. Some of the charged uh, cosmic rays um, can have energies which are absolutely enormous, 10 to the 20 uh, electron volts. But we still don't know where they come from. And the reason for that is because the charged particles do have a charge, the cosmic rays have a charge, and they get bent in the magnetic field. So when we measure them, we can't figure out where they come from. Uh, so the idea is that with neutrinos, which have no charge, zero charge, they don't get deflected in the magnetic fields. So we can measure the direction of where the neutrinos come from, we can also figure out where do all the cosmic rays come from. We think they're uh, mainly produced around uh, black holes. Uh, these are very dense regions of matter in the universe uh, which can have accretion disks around them. And uh, through some complicated processes, one can get uh, acceleration of charged particles to very high energies in objects like uh, blazers or supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. So with the neutrinos we hope to be able to figure out uh, the answer to this question, where do all the cosmic rays come from? Uh, neutrinos will also give us clues on the origin of dark matter. Um, in fact, we only know the origin of 5% of the matter in the universe, and 27% 20, of the matter in the universe might be what we call dark matter. Uh, and so, uh, if dark matter accumulates near the center of the sun or the center of the galaxy, the dark matter can annihilate and make neutrinos, so this would also give us important information on, on dark matter. But the neutrino itself is poorly understood. We don't uh, know the mass of the neutrinos. We know it's very small, but we don't know it, its absolute value. We also don't know the 
mass ordering. In fact, there are three types of neutrinos, the neutrino electron, neutrino muon, and the neutrino tau. Uh, but the mass ordering of these neutrinos is also not known. So with the Orca telescope, we, we hope to be able to figure out the, this mass ordering. And that will uh, lead on to important measurements on, in other experiments where we, we want to measure the difference in behavior of neutrinos and antineutrinos. And that CP violation studies um, could be the origin of why there is more matter in the universe than antimatter. Earlier this year, KM3Net reported the detection of the highest energy neutrino ever observed. This event took place at KM3Net's Arca site of the coast of Sicily. <laughs>